just now getting back up and getting into the play as Hansen shaken up for the second time. Lob gone back now, and it can be controlled carefully by Boychuk. Hansen's and a penalty. got the penalty. He just drilled Ferenc from behind, and Ferenc's face went heavily into the ice, really heavily. Kelly triples it by Sagan. It is touched, and it will be at least a minor and maybe more. This is under the quality. We saw him try to draw a penalty before. Eddie, watch Yannick Hansen right here. Yeah, that is just a selfish, cheap penalty in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final. Right before that, Yannick Hansen took, I believe, a stick from Zdeno Chara. He went down. But Hansen comes back, and you can't do this. And he's trying to show the referee, Dan O'Halloran, but it doesn't matter. In this situation, this is not a time to get even. There's the stick by Char. Clearly a high stick. Should have been a call. It was not. But then you skate back and take free reign on Andrew Ferentz. That can't happen. No, that's just selfish. And that's also frustration. You're on home ice. You're down 3 nothing. Everybody's been pumping your tires. You're just frustrated. You can't believe it's coming at him like this. First power play of the game for the Bruins. Both teams with a power play on the night. The one by the Canucks earlier was shotless. That was latter stage of the second period. The Bruins have had the better power play in this series. Another surprise for all of us who knew everything about these two teams before they came in. Everything in quotes. Bruin power play was the sore thumb. But it has been the stronger of the two. Played back in by Lucic, around near Bergeron, and cleared back down. Here, Boston, you could put this game out of reach. This isn't a time to just pass around the perimeter. You got to go through your reps, and you want this. Krejci moves on. Twisted back by Recchi and regathered at center. Fans complaining that there should have been too many men on the ice. Again, the frustration seeping in their emotions are really getting the best of them right now on the Vancouver side. Now Hotra played it back down, and Thomas with the careful block and turning it aside to Chara. Vancouver, you're in a situation where you don't want to start cheating while you're shorthanded, but you might have to take a chance if you get an opportunity. Beverly to Recky to Ryder, getting a piece of that was Luongo. Oh, Who knows stop. how important that might be. Good stop there. There was some room on a short side, and Michael Ryder after a terrific play there by Mark Recky. Beverly to Recky. Now watch the save here up on the shoulder. Carrying that glove awfully low and get a great angle here. Nice cross and drop, heavily Recky, and then the quick release by Ryder. Hasn't Ryder been one of the more underappreciated players for the Bruins in this series, Ed Zone Doc? He's just been so solid. He's been really good. There's been some games where he's just been able to dictate and use that big body and create and find pucks and do a great job. Not necessarily killing of time, but playing in the offensive zone with the high skill of it. Beverly is all alone in front and unable to get the pass to him was Ryder. Perhaps didn't see. I'm sure he was yelling, but it comes out in front again. And what have we hand here? Pass, a hand pass. Hand pass. Yeah. And that faceoff will come outside. Mark Recky batted it out of the air right onto the stick of Rich Peverly. So to neutralize it will come. Bergeron with two goals. Marshawn with one. There has never been a hat trick in a final game seven. There have been a lot of those at 16. There you see Recky just batting that puck out of midair, doing a good job of keeping it alive. And referee Stephen Walker right there to prevent the chance for Peverly. They get these assignments on merit. Same for the linesmen, Jay Sheras and Jean Moran tonight. Out of a large staff of over 80 officials. These are the last four. Two referees, two linesmen. Carried ahead now by Kelly. Waits and shoots one. Spiked wide by Edler. And around behind where Sagan protects. Gets back to his feet again on the defense of Edler. Taken on by Marshawn. Marshawn fed one in front that's blocked away by Luongo. LaPierre tried to touch it on, and Kelly sent it right back wide. Seven and three-quarter minutes gone in the third period. Three shots for the Bruins this period. Only two allowed to Vancouver. Ferentz marches back. Hands on now to Paye. Cannot work his way by. Brought in by Daniel Sedin. He's got Hansen. Backhander is held by Thomas. And then he is bumped into and goes down on his back. Play halted. Midway third period. 3-0 in favor of Boston. Train of 
fought because of that. Remember Claude Julian was saying when Brad Marchand banged his stick on the ice near the glass when he was coming off on a shift and broke it, you distracted our whole team with that. And that didn't help us. And so he was chided for that. Yeah, I think it's a fine line when your coach starts doing it, maybe out of the realm or the comfort zone that you're used to him trying to jumpstart his team. And I'm a big believer of, look, leave the referees to the coach. And you guys just go out and play. And at this stage, it's very difficult. But you got to have that focus that's solely on one thing, and that's chipping away and getting the puck in the offensive zone. Recky to Krejci. Krejci the shot, and getting a piece of that was Luongo. Krejci hands it on back. Ferentz gives it across to Adam McQuaid, then played on to David Krejci again. The bouncer flown all the way in deep, and Salo to get it. Stanley Cup in the house. Will it be making a trip to David Krejci's Czech Republic? Milan Lucic's East Vancouver. Will that be a popular move? <laughs> Bring it back here. Since the New Jersey Devils of 1995, teams have parceled out at least a day with the Cup. And even in 94 with the New York Rangers, it made its way to Belmont. Shot is shrugged away by Tim Thomas and golfed on back to center. Picture with the Kentucky Derby winner go for Jim in 94, the Stanley Cup. And allegedly the horse ate oats <laughs> from it. <laughs> Thrown on through to center. It jet skied with Steve Iserman. It has been in Mario Lemieux's swimming pool a couple of times. It's all a part of the party and celebration for the team that wins it. Boston ahead 3-0 in Game 7. Hanson, toe drag, and a shot trapped by Thomas. It's squirted loose, but it's tipped right back to him again by Recky. Past the halfway point of the third period. 3-0 in... Time to start taking chances if you're the Vancouver Canucks. Fed on now for Burroughs, and he couldn't short-sighted by Thomas. And chipped on where it must be regathered at center by Burroughs. In football terms, it's everybody blitzes but the water boy. Thrown in by Edler and grabbed off and held by Thomas. Down to the ice is Burroughs. going harder than that and gets upended a, a little bit and trying to sell a call. That's not going to happen. And as Burroughs goes to the bench, Mark Brett, he says, finish this thing up right. Don't be doing that. And now Brad Marchand and Burroughs both jawing at one another. Quick shot by Higgins is turned aside by the pad of Thomas. And this one's quipped back to center ice. Deflected by a stick, carried back on by Kessler. Here's Kessler pleasing along. Oh, and he tried to pull that forehand short side, and Thomas said no. Off the tip of the stick of Ferentz, under nine minutes to go, third period. Going back to get it is Sallow. Off of Hansen and back down. Icing touch up. Only Verizon gives you more Stanley Cup playoff hockey than ever before with the NHL Game Center premium app. Text NHL to 8603 to download now. Well, Ryan Kessler going after Andrew Ferentz in those left wing corners. Takes the run, gets a piece and up, but I think Ryan Kessler has had one outstanding game here in Game 7. Sedano Chara played it back in carefully. Krejci is there, knifed away from Lucic. Twisting along Daniel Sedin. Nice control by his twin brother Henrik as he reached the line. We're going to get a penalty call coming up. The call is a hook. I did not see in which direction the referee was going on that one. It was Milan Lucic that was on the back check. I actually like the way that he got in behind. He had one hand on his stick. Oh, yeah, right there, the initial, the initial hook right around the hands. Watch this, right in there. Just enough. 
It's a zero tolerance call and a tough time in the game for Milan Lucic. But that all started because of a bad pitch by Dennis Seidenberg. He can't be pitching down there. That deviates from the plan, especially when you have Tyler Sagan on the ice. Second power play of the night for Vancouver. Big shot by Erhoff is booted back out again by Thomas. Erhoff able to keep play alive. Another shot, and Thomas got a piece of that one. Thrown off by Chara and off of Erhoff and back down. On the one earlier power play, the Canucks were shotless. The Bruins were not, as they scored a shorthanded goal courtesy of Bergeron. Off of Daniel Sedin. Seidenberg gets help from Campbell. Rattled it on around and is controlled there. And nicely poked along and then held back was Paye, who recovers and slugs it back in. Danny Paye and Gregory Campbell. We talked about Ryder being an unsung hero. Those guys have been spectacular penalty killing. Erhoff gives it across. Fanning on it and then trying again was Higgins. Erhoff twisted in front, guided away by Thomas. Loose puck in front. Higgins up with it there. Hands it on back to Bieksa. Led over to Daniel Sedin. His shot deflected wide. Very hard to find a lane to shoot at. Bieksa had that one hooked back out again by Marshawn. And at center, pulled free by Bergeron. He's got Marshawn up the wing. Got it to him. And he kicked to control, and it hopped off the outside of the cage. The Vancouver defensemen are out of gas. They're just losing every race right now, Ed on Doc. You can see the wear and tear has broken them down. Burroughs able to step ahead with this one. Burroughs peels off to the outside. Just out-dueled by Peverly. Rattled right back in again. Oh, what a collision that time on Burroughs by Seidenberg. I don't know if the puck was around here, had a real good look at it. It was on the other side. This time it's Higgins and Seidenberg. Led to the back. Bieksa hurries a shot. Cut off by Chara in front. Sedano Chara with eight seconds left on the kill. Played it back in. First one back there will be Campbell. And it is played by Luongo on through to Bieksa. Kevin Bieksa fired it right back ahead. It can be carried up and blasted in by Tanev. Manny Malhotra there, dueling with Lucic, played around behind and wanting to dart free with it. Too early was Hansen. Tanev gave it on back to him, though. Hansen with a blast turned aside by Thomas. Full strength action here with six minutes and five seconds to go in the third. You will get to see a Con Smythe most valuable player to his team in the playoff presentation and the presentation of the Stanley Cup. Hansen a shot. That was off of Thomas who recovered the cover. Lots of crunching tonight. There was one of them. On Alex Burroughs, delighting a lot of people in Boston who remember the bite. Make sure you're a fan, and the number one thing, don't retaliate from plays like this. Yannick Hansen, that is a cheap shot right into the midsection of Adam McQuaid, so the coach made his point during the last TV timeout. No retaliation, back, enough bodies to protect Thomas, no turnovers, pucks deep. The last man to coach a Stanley Cup championship team inside Canada was Jacques Demers with the Montreal Canadiens of 93. He wound up going to the St. Louis Blues for his first NHL coaching job, and a player went the other way in return. Claude Julia. Henrik Sedin goes in on this draw. And it's played along behind where in some traffic it's Seidenberg. Squib back up the boards, and it's Kelly lifting it back out. Meaningful silence here. 535 separating a shot by Bergeron on that steal went off of Luongo, who has gotten a piece of just about everything that has come since the shorthanded goal by Bergeron, which was unconventional. To the back it comes to Seidenberg, ripped across, Chara shot, and that one cut off. And it's all Boston on the offensive here. Started right back out, but trouble just getting it to settle down. Burroughs tries to get through Recky. Burroughs able to bring it right back again. Alex Burroughs delays and then plays it on back. Trying to tow it up was Edler, but he has been just so limited. Marcia. It is a carnage factor by now in game 107. Yeah, tough to uh, 
Tough to make plays when you're playing one-handed and Brad Marshawn looking like a helicopter there. He got geeked out of his jock strap and then was able to save the play by spinning that stick around. I also think guys like Lucic and Brad Marchand and the physical duress they put on the Vancouver defense, the injury to Danny Hamus, the suspension to Aaron Rome, that broke the Vancouver Canucks down on this quick turnaround for game six. They haven't been the same coming out of their own zone and they've struggled deep in their own zone. They won the first two games in this series, close game. Games. One nothing, three two. Vancouver up two nothing. Soft goals given up by Roberto Luongo, and the power play went missing for the majority of this series. You got to tip your helmet to the Boston Bruins, but I think those two things, what you said, Pierre, really changed the momentum in this series. Higgins denied as he tried to get to the front by the tight checking Chris Kelly. Ryder tried to poke it on through. No luck there. Taken along by Hansen. Around in front. Save Thomas. Point blank on Hansen. And it's angled back out again by Kelly. To the last 4.05 of regulation time. Walk back ahead by Higgins. Thrown on a cross. And that directed to the corner by Chara. Hooked along now for Peverly. And a two on one. Krejci moving up with Lucic. Krejci holds to Lucic, and he couldn't pull the trigger. I think you got to get the goaltender out if you're Elaine Vigneault and the Vancouver Canucks. Coming down to three and a half, you're down by three. You got to get Luongo for the extra attacker. He was looking over at the bench, it seemed, just now as you were mentioning that. No, no. This one floated back down, and Thomas will just block that aside. Going to get it is Tambellini, though. Tambellini led it. Bieksa shot it, and it's blocked in front by Thomas. That becomes shot number 35 of the game for the Canucks, and Thomas has gotten them all. Signal on. He's gl uh, gliding out now to the hash marks, and he comes to the bench. Down by three. The net is empty with a little over three minutes to go. Here's Burroughs to the outside, and that one cut off by Mark Recchi. Recchi flew one to center. It went away from Salo, but gliding back again is Marshawn trying to cut off the icing, and he does. Henrik Sedin lobbed it on out. Burroughs kicked it on back. The net still empty. Dropping back as BX as a goalie. Marshawn, the shot. He scores! Marshawn, second goal of the night, fourth for the Bruins. Well, Patrice Bergeron takes the puck away from Alex Burrows. Kevin Bieksa, the only line of defense, and Marchand puts it into the empty net. This was 1972. Bobby Orr, a part of a championship celebration with Jerry Cheevers and the rest. The Stanley Cup was skated around Madison Square Garden in New York by John Busick. In the last 32 years, there will have been only three teams to win a game seven on the road and win a championship at the same time. These Bruins, the Pittsburgh Penguins of 2009, and Kent to call be closing for the Pirates in 1979 against the Baltimore Orioles. All of those teams black and gold. Zdeno Chara flipped it along, escaped on to center, and is hooked on back deeper by Malhotra. 2.05 to go. Brought on by Manny Malhotra, one of the inspirational leaders of this Vancouver team. Sean Thornton saw that careen back. I would anticipate the elder skatesman on this team for the Boston Bruins, Mark Recchi, to get maybe one more shift in this game seven, a Stanley Cup final. No better feeling than looking at the clock, realizing what's going to be happening in a minute and 44 seconds, and the hooks continue. A lot of yelling. A lot of patting on the head. No better pile to be in, except for the one that the Boston Bruins are going to be in in a minute and 35 seconds. Alberts gave it on across in the last 90. Daniel Sedin flopped one further. 
Hook to the corner to the left. And then out in front of shot, and that one is blocked in front. Carried back out by Krejci and lobbed on. Lucic there. Luongo is back in the cage. Lucic all alone. Getting a piece of it was Luongo. And one more salute of Lou from the crowd here that remains. Seidenberg a shot, and that deflected off him wide. And the announcement. Kessler trying to rag it through. Cannot get it through Seidenberg. 87th year, first American-based NHL team. They played through a temporary injury to the hero tonight, Patrice Bergeron. A longer-term injury to a man with a Game 7 overtime winner against Montreal, Nathan Horton. Mark Recchi is out for the final shift of his career. 30.4 to go, 37 shots to 21 Vancouver. It is a city that just loves its history because it's been such a part of it. Earlier, we saw two-time cup winner Milt Schmidt wave a flag before game six, and a two-time cup winner Bobby Orr before game four. And when they left Boston for here, a leather lung fan, and they have a few in Boston, yelled, we didn't lose to the British, and we're not going to lose to British Columbia. Hansen gave it across with 15 to go. Despite that adversity, they followed their coach to the high road. And the high road is the road to the cup. No icing. For the first time in 39 years, the Boston Bruins have won the Stanley Cup. And they pour on to celebrate with Tim Thomas, their heroic goaltender. statistics that are poured forth over the span of 15 days of a Stanley Cup final favored Vancouver just the raw percentages they took game one then games one and two and the numbers got higher a two to one series lead 84 percent of the time the team ahead wins a game five after a split of the first four at 71 percent three two series lead as they had 80 percent but it is played by humans with all kinds of emotion and not by stats. And there's Nathan Horton in the hat already, the Stanley Cup championship hat, hugging Milan Lucic. And the reaction from Ryan Kessler, Livonia, Michigan. Tough to describe that feeling. We have seen tears earlier in this playoff year from Dwayne Rollison of Tampa Bay, Henrik Lundqvist of the New York Rangers. You put so much of your heart into it. It is an absence. The Canucks salute their fans this one last time. How about general manager Peter Shirelli, Doc? wins the Stanley Cup and also part owner of the Dubuque Fighting Saints of the USHL which won the Clark Cup this year as well. It will be interesting for us to see the meeting of Patrice Bergeron and Alex Burroughs and the meeting of the two goaltenders. So much has been talked about from both of them. Tim Thomas and Roberto Luongo you see there. Thomas will be one of the last to go through this line. Longo is one of the first. Series. Series, Ryan, man. Good job. It's pretty serious. Pretty serious. Good job, Alvin. Thanks, man. Good job. Thanks. 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 Congratulations. Thank you very much. see each other in Las Vegas. Both are nominated for best goal.
Ethan Horton, Mark Recchi, goaltending coach Bob Asenza, who's done a terrific job with Tuka Rask and Tim Thomas. What a way to go out for Mark Recchi. It's always interesting to hear Pierre's interviews with Tim Thomas, a man who thinks usually before he speaks, I have a feeling he's going to be pretty quick with all of this, but let's listen. Thanks so much, Doc. Peaks, valleys, you're at the top of the NHL mountain. How's the view? <laughs> it feels great. You know, it's, it still hasn't kicked in if you want to be, if, I, if I'm completely honest. I, I can't believe it's over. Like, we've had our... Our battle meter up so high for so long that I feel like we're just moving on to the next series or something. You came in here, you lost three games, deciding game seven. What was the difference in game seven? I think, you know, the physical work that we'd done throughout the whole series added up. And, you know, being the last game, we didn't save anything, and we, and we used that physicality again. And I think that was the difference. Was uh, Aaron Rome hit on Nathan Horton a galvanizing moment for your group? Uh... Well, kind of. I mean, that that was an important turning point, you know. Uh, I, I, I don't really know. I haven't thought that went through enough. Let me ask you about Roberto Luongo. You went through the line. Obviously, there were some things said during the series. What did he say to you in the line? I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, mean, I know I told him that he's a great goalie. And I said, I want you to know I think you're a great goalie. I, I, somehow he must have took offense. I, I hadn't said anything really positive, but I hadn't said anything negative either. And, you know, part of that was the tactics. You won three game sevens. Game seven against Montreal in overtime. one nothing over Tampa in the conference final. Now a game seven here. Have you cemented your position in terms of where you thought you'd be when you started out as a young man in Flint, Michigan? Uh, I, I think I've, I've went even further than I than I thought, yeah, you know, and I, I never envisioned uh, three game sevens in one playoff series and uh, still being able to come up on top. Congratulations on an unbelievable ride, Tim. Thank Enjoy you. the view. Thank you very much. Is he the MVP? Let's learn. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 